want to share with you yeah. And your family, your family The love of Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ. So tune in, tune in And we will grow together To increase our faith with God With one touch Ministries We're touching hearts And changing lives Judges, yes. the sixth chapter, yes. verse one to seven. Yes. And I want you to highlight that because if you have your Bible apps, I want you to go into your Bible apps and I want you to begin to highlight verses one to seven. And then the reason why I'm asking you to do that is because throughout this week, I want you to meditate on what God is saying. I want you to meditate on the word of God. I want you to meditate on what God is trying to convey to you. Because there is a message, there is a word behind all of this. There's a word, there's a word, there's a word. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor. Neighbor. There is. There is. A word. A, a word. word. Glory to God. So, Pastor Shannon, if you could, if you can go with me to ju uh, Judges, the sixth chapter, verse one to seven. If you can read for the people. Yes. God bless you. The Israelites did evil in the Lord's sight. So the Lord handed them over to the Midianites for seven years. The Midianites were so cruel that the Israelites made hiding places for themselves in the mountain caves and strongholds. Whenever the Israelites planted their crops, uh -huh. the Midianites, uh, from... Mi um, mm -hmm. Amalek and the people of the east will attack Israel mm -hmm. camping in the land and destroying crops as far away as Gaza. Mm -hmm. they left the Israelites with nothing to eat taking all the sheep mm -hmm. goats, cattle and donkeys uh -huh. these enemies hordes coming with their livestock and tents mm -hmm. were as thick as locusts uh -huh. they arrived on droves of camels uh -huh. too enormous to count uh -huh. and they stayed until the land was stripped bare mm -hmm. so Israel was reduced to starvation by the Midianites mm -hmm. then the Israelites cried out to the Lord for help Mm -hmm. When they cried out to the Lord because uh -huh. of Midian. Come on, there you go. All right, all right. So you have your scripture, and we're talking about Gideon, and we're going to be talking about Gideon and his army. And some of you know the story, some of you don't know the story. But I would like for you, if you could, in your moments of meditation throughout the week, go back and read Judges, the sixth chapter, verses one to seven. Matter of fact, read the whole chapter and you can get a more clear understanding. But I'm gonna do my best to make sure that you get an understanding about Gideon. One thing I liked about Gideon, Gideon did not think that he was qualified. Well. How many of you have been chosen to do a work in the house of the Lord, but you feel like I'm just not qualified to do this job? I'm really not qualified. How many have you gone to apply for a job and you go, okay, I'm applying for this job knowing I'm not really qualified for the job. I really don't have the experience. Huh? I really don't know exactly what I'm doing, but I'm going to apply, hoping and praying maybe I can get a job from this place. I can get employed, but in the meantime, I'm going to go with a plan B and a plan C. How many of you have done that before? Yes. My God. I know about me. I know that I'm a planner. I'm an organizer. I love things to be in order, and if things are not in order, it causes me to to, to, to uh -uh, I can't do nothing until it gets in order. My husband can tell you, I can't walk out the house into the beds, me. And then I gotta make sure the pillows are right. And then to make sure things are put back. And I gotta make sure the dishes are washed and make sure everything is put away because they say, oh, that's OCD. I just like stuff in order. Come on. Yes. Come on. I just like stuff in order. And I call myself planning because I never know when something is about to happen. I don't like surprises. I'm not real big on surprises. My husband can tell you, I think we tried really hard to outdo one another with surprises. We, we, we did, for the first year of our marriage, we were like in competition.
fishing with surprises. So my husband would call himself trying to surprise me. Then I call myself trying to surprise him. Yeah. And it was like we was going back and forth. We was in competition. Until one day God said, all right, y'all two need to stop this thing. <laughs> you can't cover everything. So, in, in some ways, people say, well, Deidre, that's like controlling. Um, yeah, maybe to some, but to me, it don't look like controlling. But the Holy Ghost had to check me one day. He said, you know, baby, I, as much as I love you, you know, but that's a controlling type of spirit. I said, oh, it is, Father? He said, yeah. He said, because you want things all the time, the way that you want it. And if it's not done your way, then it's really not being done correctly. He said, I'm going to have to break that spirit off of you. Mm -hmm. now, now, I'm leaning. And I think my daughter and my husband really like that part of me. Because well. when I would come in the house from the grocery store, as soon as I come in the house, I got to put the food away. Dumb jokers. Go in the bedroom, they go sit down, Come on, talk they go it. somewhere and chill, watch the TV. I and I'm like, yo, the ice cream, what am I putting the food away? And I be fussing through the house. And I cause myself to be so upset for no apparent reason. And God had to tell me, he said, now I need you to understand the only person in the household is upset is you. Everybody else is chilling. He said, that means it's time for you to let go. You gotta learn how to loosen up. It's called balance, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. Balance, balance, balance. I know what you're talking about. So the Holy Ghost, between the Holy Ghost and my husband, I've been chest tied off and on about balance in myself because I put things in order. Well, reaching here. Then I had to find out. See, this is all about learning yourself. I tell people all the time, you know, everybody wants to be the prophet, but nobody wants to know themselves. Before you can become a prophet, you better make sure you know who you are. Because when you know who you are, then you know how your, 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 your anointing comes together. Yes. So I had to find out that because I like things in order, that's the order of, that's how prophets are. They like things in order. Yes. So I had to find out that my natural side and my spiritual side was actually together. We were in competition. Mm. I said, all right, God, here we go. But I had to learn myself. And then I had to learn when to be the prophet and when to be a wife, when to be a mother, yes. and when to be a friend. Wow. And it took time. I'm still working on it. And I, I'm, not, I'm not finished yet because every, every time I go up, there's a new level that I need to learn about myself. So before we become prophets, you gotta learn who you are as an individual. So I had to learn that I can, I can actually have balance. So I was reading about worship. Mm. And I was learning a few things here. And how it all corresponds with relationship with God. Knowledge. Worship and confident. Mm. Confident with covenant. Okay. Knowledge, covenant, worship, being confident in all of that. So I learned what all of those mean. And I had to learn that. When you are in knowledge of worship, that means you're in intimacy with God. Mm -hmm. So that's an intimate, your knowledge, your knowledge of knowing that God is real, God is here. So you become intimate with him. Yeah. Then I had to learn about worship. Worship is the passion side of me. Mm. That's the side that makes me cry. That's the side that, that makes me feel. That's the side that makes me, oh my God, oh, I'm falling in love with Jesus. I am. Yes. Hello. Commitment and covenant. I have to learn that my commitment is my covenant. That means I'm connected. That means I'm willing to do, I'm willing to do whatever it takes. I'm not running from this thing because I'm committed. It. It's just like a relationship. Husband and wife. I am married to a man who I love and I'm committed to this man and I'm willing to stick in. Oh, come on, somebody. Yeah. I'm willing to stick in 
one thing about relationships, it's always an up and down type of thing. So I'm committed to this thing. Yeah. My question is to you, are you committed? Come on. Yes. Come on. Come on. Are you committed to be into the covenant and to the worship of passion up to the knowledge of intimacy with God? Come on. All right, y'all gotta thank y'all. Yes. That's that good prophetess. My God. So Gideon, because of his doubt within himself, he forgot that God had called him to do a work. And he began to ask God questions. My God. He said, God, I need to know for sure, are you really calling me to do this thing? Are you really calling me to be who you, you said I could be? Are you willing to call, are you really calling me to lead us in war? Are, 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 you, are, you, are you really calling me? I need to know, God, are you really calling me? Some of you are asking the question, God, are you really calling me? Wow. Man of God, woman of God, I want to let you know that God said, I am calling you. Yeah. I am calling you to war. I am calling you to intimacy. I am calling you to knowledge. I am calling to passion. I am calling you to worship. I am calling you to covenant. I am calling you to be committed to, to the war. To be committed to the will of God. Yeah. Are you willing to do this thing? Amen. All right. So Gideon began to get a tribe together. A whole bunch of men that was willing to go to war. Yeah. So that was like the evangelist side of him. He went and started getting everybody. Everybody was coming. Now, how many of you know when you're evangelizing, everybody that you touch ain't going to come to church? That's right. I'm, I'm just here to right. tell you, when you evangelize and when you're in on streets, a lot of times people are not going to come to the church house. Like, like, like a prophet said, apostle, pastor, she's a little bit of everything. Like she said earlier, um, you know, we, 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 we are here. We are here. Yes. But we ain't going nowhere. That's right. When we're in this place, you know, when we're touching people, we may be few in number, but we're here. And then a lot of times we're here and we're touching people, but everybody's not willing to come into this place because the church hurt. And she said, I don't believe in the church hurting. That I believe that there's people who are literally just ignorant to the fact that who God really is and what God can really do. Yeah. And, and that's what that, that that's what real 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 uh, uh uh just realness is all about. You gotta explain it that way. That church hurt is not inside the church. It's the people yes. that are hurting. Yes. Hurt people hurt people. That's right. Come on. When you're in the church and, and they call it church hurt because it happened in the church. church. Come on. Right. I need y'all to understand that. Yeah. Just because it happened in the church doesn't mean that it was the church that hurt you. The building didn't hurt you. The building didn't slap you upside the head. The building didn't talk about you. It was the people inside of the building that was running their mouths. Yeah. Because they're ignorant to the fact that God is real. They always run. Okay. So with evangelism. This is why we have to go outside of the four walls of the church house. Because evangelism, you gotta remember that people are not gonna always come into the house. They're not gonna always come into this house. They're not gonna always be inside the church. They're not gonna always sit inside of your pews. But what they will do is they will follow you uh, to the store. Yes. They will follow you and ask you, can you give them something to eat? That's your cue that's your right there. Some of you don't understand that's your cue right there. When people are asking for something to eat, you, as you're buying them something to eat, begin yep. to spit the word to them. Yeah. Well, God told me to tell you that he loves you. Uh huh. A lot of times that's all you have to say is God told me to tell you that he loves you. Why? Because people around today feel like God don't love them. Yes. I was one of them, but I was inside the church house. Yes. Oh. Come on. was open. I was in there all night, all day, all night, all day. But I felt like God didn't love me. My God. But I was inside the church house. Mm. This is why I keep telling y'all it's important for you to just tell people God loves you. 
Yes. All right, all right, I'm going on. I told you I'm gonna go everywhere. Cause see, you know what, I look at it like this. I may not have y'all again. So if I don't have you again, I better give it all to you at one time. <laughs> all right, so y'all have to excuse me. I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna, I'm not one of those pastors or preachers or whatever you wanna call me today. I'm not one of those people that just stick to the script. If God puts it in my spirit, I'm gonna say it. I'm gonna say it because I may not see you next week. Uh, glory to God. And I wanna impact you now because a lot of times you don't understand we only got 20 seconds to keep the attention of a person.
watching these people that are on our team. We're not even watching them. We just think just because they're connected to us that they're for us. But God is telling me to tell you today, just because they're connected to you does not mean that they're for you. There may be, oh, come on, somebody. There's a thing that there's people that are connected to you. They may like you. They may enjoy you. Huh? But they may not be for you. Yes. yes. See, I can enjoy people's company, but that don't mean I want to be in relationship with them. Yes. I don't always want to be connected to everybody. So God began to tell, tell Gideon, I need you to keep your eyes open. I need you to watch these people. I need you to make sure that these people are doing what they said that they were going to be doing. He said, watch them as they go to the water. And some of them were at the water and they were just, they had their whole face in the water. Then you have some guys that would get down, get the water, and begin to bring the water to their mouth and kept their eyes open. Uh -huh. When you're in war, you need people who are willing to keep their eyes and ears open. Yeah. You don't want people with you that's supposed to be in covenant with you. Uh -huh. Back to that word covenant, commitment. And they can't keep their eyes open. Mm. They can't watch with you. They can't pray with you. They can't talk to you. They, they have no encouraging words for you. I'll never forget the, uh, I called one young lady and, and, and I, I was talking to her and we were talking and I, and I told her at the end, I said, sis, I really do need prayer. Yeah. That's what I said. I said, I really need prayer. I need somebody to pray with me because I was down. I was really down, I was down, and my spirit was down. Yeah. I said, I need somebody to pray with me. Oh, man, I want to pray with you, but I'm real tired, I'm worn out. So that goes to show me that right there lets me know, even though we may be on the same team, uh -huh. but everybody don't have the same strength as I have. You got to get connected with people that look like you, that sound like you, that act because there's going to come a time when your body is weak and you're going to need somebody to hold you up. Yes. As time went on, God told Gideon, Gideon, I want you to begin to disconnect yourself from some more men. Send them home. Tell them they're not, that you don't need them any longer. So it got to the point that Gideon began to tell the rest of the guys that, that they can go home. And Gideon wound it up with what? 300. Yes. 300. So, <laughs> the funniest thing is, when I was studying, God told me, he said, the topic of your sermon chosen, but you can only pick three. My God. So when Jesus was trying to do what he needed to do, he only, he, even though he had 12 disciples, but he only would allow himself to connect with three. Yes. James, John, and what? Pete. Yes. He only allowed himself to connect with three because why? Three was more closer to him. He Yes. They had his what? Heartbeat. Yes. 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 Connect with people who have your heartbeat in this hour. Yes. God is calling for you to connect with people that have your heartbeat, that speak like you, that talk like you, that act like you. You want people that talk like you would talk and have the heart of love like you would have the heart of love. Yes. See, Gideon got to the point where he only had 300. And God said, the reason why I put you at 300, he said, once again, you to understand that you can't do this thing by yourself. You can't fight this war by yourself. You need my help at all times. God told me to tell every last one of you you may be in war today. You may be fighting against somebody. You may be tussling and going back and forth with somebody. But God told me to tell you glory to God. All you have to remember in this hour. I got 
feel like my back is up against the wall, God. Yeah. I really don't have much working with me. But God said, if you don't worry about the number, just know that I'm right there. Right. Yeah. And they want that war. Because Gideon was willing to be obedient. He was committed to the call. He was committed, he was committed to the covenant yes. that he had with God. Gideon also acknowledged. He knew he was, he was he knew that he 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 needed to be intimate with God. See the way yeah. they won that war was how they waited till everybody went to sleep. Uh -huh. They had. Standing room only is not on your team. Woo! Oh, God. Everybody is 
but I preach all over. I can hit nations. You know how I can hit nations? Because I got stored up praises. Yeah. We may be small in number, but we move in mountains, y'all. Y'all may be small in number, but you move in mountains. Y'all get the job done. God said, don't you worry, don't you fret, because the job is being done. God said, in this hour, y'all begin to praise him, because why? The job is being done. The job is being done. When I look at this pulpit, the job is being done. It may just take one or two people, but the job.